Hello, it's Jonathan, Senor Smoke from Curto's in Westchester County. August 1st, 2018, kicking off a new month, doing video posts in a new location, the House of Smoke. More on that to come, folks. But what better way to kick off new video posts, a new location, than to be sitting here, standing here next to uh, one of the most exciting new releases this year, the DCS Series 9. Here I have the 48 inch bumped out to 54 with their side compartment accessory over here, which allows their 48 inch grill to fit seamlessly into a cutout for a 54 inch grill from one of their competitors. Smart move there. What I want to talk about today specifically is the way that they treated the back part of the grill or what I usually call the no man's land, okay? Typically on your premium gas grills, and we'll even say the mid-market grills as well, what do you have on the back space? Maybe, maybe you have a warming rack, okay? Or if you have a rotisserie system, you'll have your infrared burner back there. Now, here's the problem with that. Number one, most people I speak to, I would say 60%, and they're in the wrong, mind you, 60% want no part of the rotisserie, okay? I don't agree with that. I've done a video about that specifically, but nevertheless, they don't care about the rotisserie. So then the infrared burner in the back is useless to them, right? Most grills will have some type of rack, usually one piece running along, and on the middle to lower end grills, they're built like garbage, all right? Um, what is it used for then? If you get your Lynx or your Alfresco or whatever, Twin Eagle, whatever it may be. I mean, it's typically for warming, right? Well. What these guys did is I think they, and this was really ingenious because they said to themselves, well, people are popping infrared burners into the main grill firebox for years now. Um, we've already done an amazing thing with our grease management system, something that they basically, I mean, they, they are the ones who, who started that whole thing with the grease running off to the trough in the front due to the slope grates. They did a home run job on that. Insert, um, installing uh, front-facing smoker boxes, et cetera, et cetera. What else can we do to differentiate the grill? And they said, let's attack the no man's land. So what they did is they have a multi-tier racking system in the back. And I did talk about this briefly in the introductory video that I did in the um, early, late winter, early spring. But now that it's here, I can really, really dive into this. So what you're getting is you're getting two racks that instead of one warming rack, you're getting two racks, all right? Which, why is it better to have two independent racks as opposed to having one long one? Because what you can do is, there are holes punched throughout this. You can actually set this up on multi-tiers, <clears throat> multi-levels of grilling. On this side over here, what I could do is I could lower that one. Let's just say I had a piece of beef and I wanted to indirect cook it. We're going beyond warming now. What I'm doing is I'm lowering this to this position over here, which is at least five inches lower, and I've got hotter flame going on underneath. So the versatility of the DCS cooking system, because they don't bother with an infrared burner, and they have such a wide swath of temperatures running from low all the way to sear, okay? There is so much that you can do by playing with the temperatures below and then the different tiers of racking up on top. Now, here's the game changer. Ready? Roast, slow cook, or simmer. What is this? It's a metal pan. It's a hell of a lot more than that. The minute and I saw this, if you look at the POP literature in there, they've got their root vegetables. These are mini potatoes with rosemary, some olive oil. Okay, I could appreciate that. We're gonna, we're gonna warm that up. We're gonna cook it slow roasted on there off the direct flame. The first thing I thought of is, man, I'm gonna get some wood chips, soak them, I'm gonna put them in there, and I'm gonna perfume the whole damn grill with some smoke. All of a sudden now it's running with my Traeger and my Yoder and all those other pellet grills and smokers that I'm using, but we're running on gas. That's an experiment that I'm gonna do. I love the smoke, folks. That's just the way it is. Um, because, by the way, one of the differences between Series 9 and the old Heritage Series is they took out the front-facing smoker box in the front. They said, you don't need it anymore. We have a charcoal smoker box insert over here. That's another video. And then we have this thing up top over here, which really they're positioning as a device to cook on, all right? To do your roasting, your slow cooking, your braising, your simmering, whatever it may be, 
I'm going to attack that as another smoking vehicle. Nevertheless, it's wide enough and deep enough to put a small fryer chicken, four pounds. You can absolutely do that on there with some root vegetables underneath it. Hit it with some heat from the back side over here or on the uh, right side of the grill and then have something else going on over here. You could even load up this box down here with charcoal or wood and slow smoke it. We want our smoke, remember, in our live fire cooking coming from below creating a, a convection pattern, right? We want it coming from below and the meats, the proteins up higher. So this multi-tier system here, I'm gonna go on record August 1st, 2018, and I'm gonna say this much. The lights are fine, the lighter hood, you know, whatever, it's great. Um, the smoker charcoal box, which I have yet to use, so I'm not gonna give a grade on that yet. Could be a little deeper though, I'll tell you that much. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is the reason to buy this grill, all right? That's my home run, absolute home run. So, um, you know, when I said that to a customer the other day, they kind of looked at me like I had three heads. They're like, who gives a shit about the racks and this and that? And I actually walked them through the way, basically what I just said in the video. And they were just like, you know, kind of a light one on. They said, you know what, man? I kind of get it. And they ended up buying one. So, uh, food for thought. Another thing to think about. Um, just to get people beyond this whole notion of these racks back here being for nothing other than toasting hamburger and hot dog buns. I will never forget two years ago, because of my videos, this gentleman drove in from another state and he said, man, I want to go take, uh, it was the Alfresco. I want to go take the Alfresco for a test drive. So I had one here and this guy brought in literally like a three and a half inch ribeye. These things were dino ribeyes, okay? And the way he cooked it, I've never seen a piece of steak cook like this before. He put it up on the rack after dressing it and had it up there for at least 15 to 20 minutes. And then what he did, probably more like 20 minutes because it was so thick. And then we took it down to a high, high flame on the bottom. That's a reverse sear. Obviously, I've done that many, many, many times. The thing, though, is that typically on the reverse sear on a, um, on a gas grill, I would have it still on the grate level, just at a lower temperature. His logic was, no, I want to have it on the rack. I want it above the heat, really above, get some convection process going on. And he goes, and then we're going to drop it down to the sear. So that actually transformed the way that I thought about it. And I said, well, now the Alfresco racks are not just warming racks, they're cooking racks. That's actually the way that I do my, uh, my steaks now on my alfresco at home and on my DCS as well. So just think about that, that change of thought, okay? Whereas these racks, again, they're bringing more to the table than any of the other grills because of this system. Think of all the different ways that you can transform the way that you cook by going higher, lower, using the pan, smoking with the pan, putting juice in the pan. It really is going to transform the way that you cook. I spoke for a long time. I wanted to cut these down short. I failed in that attempt, but hopefully I succeeded in educating you a little bit more about Series 9 and what they're doing in the back over here. There are more videos to come on this series, and hopefully soon I will be cooking on it and knocking things out. You want to reach me, JonathanAcurtos.com, or come in and visit. Folks, thank you. Peace.